What's interesting is that I can stop on any frame in the opening battle sequence of Saving Private Ryan, and the shot will still work. Hey, you're still some weapons! Follow me! Now, you may be thinking, what makes it any different from stopping on this frame? Or that frame? In fact, in comparison to Saving Private Ryan, these uses of shaky cam editing are rather tame, so what makes them so problematic? Well, a lot of it is to do with the intent of visual stimuli. Filmmaking is a powerful tool that requires a certain kind of precision that just makes things feel right. It's a psychological tool, an emotional tool, something that makes a moment provocative. With Saving Private Ryan, you're perhaps witnessing the greatest cinematic understanding of how to make a battle scene work or at least one of the best. In the opening scene of the film, which sees US troops land on Oma Beach in Normandy in June 1944, Spielberg fundamentally attempts to recreate a real experience that real people went through. In fact, just listen to how war veterans describe their experiences. First of all, it was chaos. That's the only word that you can uh, use to describe what the hell was going on. Why are we doing this? I said to myself, why, why am I doing this? And dig a hole and try to get below the, the firing squad and all that. And the closer you get to the ground, the longer you're going to live. That was my motto, anyhow. A lot of what they describe is what Spielberg accurately attempts to convey, as he says in his own words. I was looking for realism all the time. I didn't want to shoot the picture in a way that would seem like a Hollywood production coming to Omaha Beach and making a gung-ho extravaganza. Right there, Spielberg effectively summarizes our discontent with many modern battle sequences. For example, if we were to analyze the opening shootout of Jonathan LeBeesman's Battle Los Angeles, cinematically it kinda works, but visually it doesn't. LeBeesman is guilty of this Hollywood extravaganza. The intent of Battle LA appears to be more about achieving spectacle than reinforcing the emotions of disorientation and vulnerability. Its cuts are menacingly abrupt and devoid of a coherent continuity which disengages the audience from reading the scene that takes direct influence from Saving Private Ryan. The intent might be deliberate, but the effect doesn't translate onto the screen because whereas Saving Private Ryan makes sense of its chaos, Battle LA simply gives us nothing provocative to look at or feel. Also, look at this scene from The Hunger Games. The intent is not spectacle, but rather to create dramatic suspense. But the problem is it's too elaborate with its aggressively literal heartbeat soundtrack matching each cut, and the transition between steady cinematography and handheld close-ups breaks the illusion with its disjointed and messy editing. Even when it also takes direct influence from Saving Private Ryan in its ear-piercing soundtrack that's supposed to reflect the emotions of a stunned character, there is no direct impact as the effect fails to work with its visuals, and the editing shamelessly attempts to hide its PG-13 violence. So what makes Saving Private Ryan so unique as a cinematic experience? This is Robert Kappa, a Hungarian war photojournalist who was on the beaches of Normandy in 1944. Of course, while Spielberg was able to consult with real people firsthand, Kappa presented Spielberg with a much more direct visual representation. Now, Robert Kappa couldn't share his real experiences given that he tragically stepped on a landmine a decade shy of Oma Beach, but what he left behind were 11 photographs off that very day. This was a collection that was known as the Magnificent Eleven. Kappa took a total of 106 pictures of Oma Beach, but only 11 survived the printing process. These 11 photographs, despite not being diligently selected, reinforce Kappa's emotional experience in a visual context. It's these two photos that stand out for me. Now, one could question why these photos are regarded of such quality. They lack composure, visual articulation, depth of field, and are too blurry and grainy to be considered respectful pieces of traditional photography. But when you're trying to avoid being shot in the face, these photos become a lot more poignant. There is a fierce and ferocious energy to them. The blurriness reinforces chaos and disorientation, and the graininess helps convey the sandy, dirty, and uncomfortable environment. These photos look like they're from a point of view, they feel personal and from a legitimate perspective. As a photojournalist, Robert Kappa is attempting to capture real life in its natural, undisturbed form. 
As Spielberg stated, if done correctly, visuals should capture the sights, sounds and smells of an event, and with his collaborating partners including cinematographer Janusz Kaminski and editor Michael Kahn, the three of them artfully and profoundly recreate war with faithful authenticity. Let's look at how they effectively translate Kappa's work into the film. The scene in question opens with a very powerful transition. As the elderly war veteran James Ryan looks out into the sea of graves, the close-up of his tearful eyes intensifies his inner feelings, while a sharp juxtaposition to the beach not only carries the metaphor, but makes the following scene feel like a haunting memory with the ominous silhouettes of the Czech hedgehogs looming over the cold, eerie beach. We go back into his tragic emotional past with fierce abruptness. Each shot feels isolated and documented with stark, gritty and dramatic emphasis, which is accentuated by Kaminsky's use of the process of bleach bypass. Bleach bypass, essentially in a post-production context, is a colour correction technique that involves the adjustment of both saturation and exposure that effectively drains colour from the image to give the film a much more washed out, starker filmic look. Very important to know if, if you're a DP, but especially if you're an editor, you have to know how to handle it. We had 45 degree shutter, strobing effect. We had a streaker camera, which added vertical streaking through the frame. We had a shaker camera, a variable speed drill motor that had shaking effect. And we also had step printing. We shot at 12 frames a second, and then we doubled it to bring it up to 24 frames a second. That one gave you the sense of, the, of a newsreel. You know, it, 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 looked, it looked real, it looked like a newsreel. As Michael Kahn explains, they wanted the footage to look like a 1940s newsreel, which involved the saturated images and obviously lacked the technical sophistication we have today. The bleach bypass invigorates the emotional impact of the scene as it perpetuates the dirty, harsh and disgusting atmosphere that the characters are in. As a result, the film looks like a documentary. It feels realistic in both its composition and how each cut feels both disconnected but also maintaining seamless continuity for the viewer. There's something very gloomy and metallic about the colours which helps heighten the morbidity of war. This is not a fun or happy place to be. It's savage, unflinching and cruel, and the film's depressing tone helps elevate the feelings of the characters in their dire situation. At the same time, there's something very organic about the cinematography. The camera never feels staged or deliberately set up in a particular way. The important point is that no matter how shaky the camera is, the focus of the shot remains intact. Notice how the camera is not only observing, but also becomes a character itself. It throws us onto the battlefield as we drag ourselves across the ground, staying close to the wall and taking cover from danger. The film also breaks the fourth wall for dramatic effect, with the blood, water and dirt hitting the lands that feels naturally seamless within the scene. There is a feeling of vulnerability that allows the audience to empathise with its characters. The constant feeling of disorientation is conveyed through the Dutch angles tilting the axis of the world, and even some shots are zoomed in to further intensify the shaky disarray of explosions and even the intensity of firing a gun. There's a harsh intimacy to the entire ordeal, but the film never has to vocally call attention to anything because we can read and emote with what is essentially traditional filmmaking principles. The visuals of blood and gore are already extremely provocative and difficult to watch, but it's how these sequences of images are framed and pieced together that generates a synergy that makes us feel like we're truly there. And even if you stop on any random frame, Kappa's real, authentic, emotional, in-the-moment photographs perfectly translate onto the screen. So next time you watch a movie that attempts to invoke a strong reaction from you, just think whether it's purely for spectacle, or whether it's actually true to the intent of the film's ideals.